what's up YouTube thought of the day number eight. Um, going to tackle the question of polarized versus pyramidal training or intensity distribution in training uh, today. Uh, as a reference or uh, kind of a reply or a thought on a tweet by Marco Altini, which I will link in the description below, uh, which reminded me of, of that uh, interesting distinction or way of framing the debate, which in my sense, in my estimation, makes a ton of sense and, and should be the real conversation in that, uh, and for those who are maybe not familiar with those two different concepts or training structures or intens intensity distribution structures, polarized as it's usually characterized at least is going to be a higher proportion of low intensity training and then a very small proportion of high intensity training, uh, usually described as severe intensity domain type of intensity. So above the second threshold, if you don't know what thresholds are, if you don't know what intensity domains are, uh, go check out my most recent uh, course, online course on understanding thresholds and training zones. It's available on the Upside Strength Academy. Uh, the link is below in the description. <clears throat> so if you want more details, go check this out. Um, so I was saying polarized. So you have some moderate intensity domain, large amounts of them, and then l large amounts of work being done under the first threshold and then very small amounts of work being done above the second threshold. And that is usually what is, or what people refer to when they say polarized training. Um, and then there's the pyramidal type of distribution where you're gonna have a maybe slightly smaller proportion of low intensity training relative to the polarized um, system or approach or philosophy, whatever we want, we want to call it. Um, and then you're going to have a higher proportion of, or an important amount of um, heavy intensity work, heavy being the domain that lies between threshold one and threshold two. So it's kind of yellow, it's not red, um, yellow going into orange kind of intensity. Um, it's not easy, but it's not super hard either. And you, there's a higher proportion of this type of work. And then a small, small proportion of, of high intensity training or, or severe intensity training. Um, and that's usually how those two camps are characterized. It's actually something that we talked about on my podcast, on the podcast that I recorded with Steven Seiler. Uh, I recommend that you go check out this interview if you haven't yet. And if you do, leave me a comment below that uh, podcast. I had a lot of fun recording with uh, uh, Steven, uh, Dr. Seiler. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to, to hear your thoughts on that interview and uh, maybe who you'd like to hear next on the podcast. That's a, that's another thing you can, you can tell me about in the comments below. Um, but anyway, so you have those kind of two camps that are usually uh, put against each other or, or confront, confronted or put in opposition, right? But as Marco very well uh, explained, and I think he was referring him to a an article by Alex Hutchinson, the author of Endure, which is a phenomenal book. You should read it. And you should also listen to my interview with Alex, also on the podcast. Also leave me a comment there if you enjoyed the interview. Um, and the idea is that actually the polarized, everything is polarized in the following sense. It's not much about what you do whether you're whether you're you're doing more heavy intensity domain stuff or more severe intensity domain stuff that shouldn't be the determining factor the determining factor should be and we're talking specifically here about endurance sports and endurance sport performance at the highest level uh, well, i mean at all levels because that that's really kind of universal it's more the polarized is polarizing training between volume below threshold one and above threshold one regardless of what that might be above threshold one. Uh, and I think once you understand the distinction, then whether people talk the classical polarized or the classical pyramidal um, distribution, it's all the same because you have the highest proportion of low intensity, moderate intensity training, zone one, zone two, moderate intensity domain, um, which is going to be the driver of so many important adaptations that are gonna not only develop the structures and functions within 
the organisms that or the organism that are necessary to perform at the highest level and also support the higher intensity work that is performed. So as long as the majority of your training volume is done below that first threshold, whatever you do with the rest of the volume, the higher intensity volume is going to be dependent on your sport, is going to be dependent on your needs, is going to be dependent on the moment of the season. So obviously if you're um, a 3K, a 3K a steeplechase uh, competitor, your event lives in zone five and VO2 kind of VO2 max kind of territory. So obviously you might have a, a season structure that is more kind of zone three towards zone four towards, towards zone five to, to greatly simplify things. Whereas if you talk to somebody who's competing in Ironman, then their season might go from zone, zone five to zone four to zone three, because they're going from general to specific. Uh, or away from their event to close to their event kind of thing. Um, or it might be the opposite for somebody who is very, very strong in zone three as an Ironman athlete and has huge deficiencies in terms of top end VO2 and, and, and those kind of things. Um, but again, as long as you recognize that Polarize is not about only, only high intensity training and no, nothing in the middle, but polarize is actually polarizing your training between what's below first threshold. And that's the vast majority of your volume. And then do whatever you need above the first threshold that is going to develop the qualities that you need to perform in your sport or support the adaptations that are going to feed into the next block of training that then this is going to get you better to your competition. If you see what I mean, again, it depends on the moment of the season. Nobody does the same training year round. And there's a good reason for that. So there is, in my mind, no debate even between the, should someone do, if, if, we, if we start from the assumption that we understand that low intensity training should be the, the staple and the, 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 the main piece of, of any training program in endurance sports, then the question of, but then should someone train in, in the heavy or the severe domain? What's better? What's, what should they do more? What are the Norwegians doing? Blah, blah, blah. Well, again, they, you don't do the same training year round. So you just need to periodize relative to your needs, relative to your competition, relative to the moment of the season. Um, and that, that's the important thing to understand. So again, that was not my original thought, so to speak. It was, it was kind of a, a reply to that post, but I think it was important to note because they're, they're often put in opposition, that polarized and pyramidal uh, kind of training intensity distributions. Uh, I don't think they should be. I think they can both live under the polarized below and above first threshold kind of paradigm they both they both work in that model right it's all about finding the right models to explain reality and the current reality that i see at least that i understand is that if you use the model of polarized between below first threshold with the vast majority of volume done there and above first threshold with the intensity and volume you can tolerate given your your specific needs then you're probably going to do pretty well um or at least you're on the right track to do well if you're patient enough to develop all those adaptations <clears throat> so i'll stop here and i'll let you tell me what you think in the comments below uh do you agree with my uh with that statement with those statements do you agree with marco's post that i put in the description below if not let me know what you think let me know your perspective um, and again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.